So let's rewind this thing back because I was watching some of your videos and I saw that you said you've been at this track thing, you've been running since you were eight years old. You've been running since you was eight, and and, and, I, and I just want to just want to parallel this to some, something that that like I've seen because oftentimes I've seen people uh, or, or I've seen really gifted athletes at a young age, but then like five ten years down the road, like they burn out or they they leave the sport, they just done with it completely. So how did you continue to keep working at the craft and keep staying consistent from eight to college? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say it's been all peaches and cream because it, it hasn't. I mean, of course, like going from eight all the way up into my junior year in college, like I never questioned my love for track like at all. It's just because it was always something that I was good at. It's always something I enjoyed to do. It's just like when I went to track practice, it's like nothing else mattered. And my parents never had to force me to go either. That's the thing. It's just like when your parents like force you to do something, if they want it more than you, then like it, they're already checked out. So I was always like super excited to go to practice and just love to be just running you know just being a part and then of course when I started to pick up hurdles like I picked up hurdles way later in in the game than most so that was like a whole new like un unlock level to to like my ability and to track and field like I didn't know nothing about hurdles so it was just like something else to do and then I was actually good at it so I just kept progressing and building but then my junior year in college, by the time we got to regionals, I was like feeling super tired, super feeling um, super burnt out. I was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I don't want to be here. Like, this is just too much. Like, and it was literally right before the national championship. So it was the meet before nationals. And I was just like, like, I just couldn't get these thoughts out of my head. I'm just like, why am I feeling this way? But then I like got myself back together, locked in. And I was like, hold on, like we've trained way too much to give up now like you know we start training in September and it's late May and I'm like trying to be not want to do this and feeling type of way or whatever whatever so like I said it was a four-day meet so we ran like every other day so that off day that I had before the finals I was like like I said let's lock back in and if you want to quit if you want to do whatever whatever like do it after national or at this point, I had to do Olympic trials, too. So that was another thing. I was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. So we're at regionals, and I'm just like, we train way too much for this. So anyways, fast forward, I make it to nationals in both of my events, the 100 hurdles and the 400 hurdles. And I was just like, we train for this. Like, like this is not the this is not the time to, to not want to do this, to check out and immensely not be there. So I ended up pulling through. Um, I became a two-time All-American, like, in two individual events that me, I – got sixth place in the 100 hurdles and then I got fourth place in the 400 hurdles and I was like my first like individual like NCAA I was like I'm fourth in the NCAA like that was really big for me since it's my junior year my junior year and I've never I've never had um I never became an all-american like individually it's always been like relays um and then like I was super happy like I was like all right I love this again I want to do this whatever whatever but then like we had to stay in Oregon for three weeks, like for two more weeks after that. So we ended up staying in Oregon for three weeks total, like did not go home, stayed in the same hotel room. Like it was just like super hard. I was like back like, oh my gosh, I don't feel like doing this. Like I've already done my job like in the collegiate season. Like I'm ready to have, I'm ready to take a break. Like I spent my 21st birthday in Oregon mm. and I was just like, I don't want to do this at this point. Like I just want to take a break from it. So, I mean, of course I... I of course I ran it's Olympic trials I'm like it's an experience whatever whatever but I went out there the first event that I had to do was 100 hurdles and I went out there and like I just like excuse my language I have to ask it like I didn't feel like doing I didn't feel like being the Messiah that everyone knew I was mentally checked out I was like I just had my 21st birthday like I'm just turned up like I don't want to do this I don't want to be here so I reflected back on that race and I was like like half half asking something was never me like that's never been me that's not who I am so although it didn't count towards anything I still felt like I failed myself just having a gift and having the opportunity to be out there and just taking taking that as just like it meant nothing when so, it's some people's dream to make an Olympic trials and compete I was just out there being like days ago so I had to like take a step back and reflect and I was blessed that I had another opportunity to run the 400 hurdles. And I ended up making it to the semifinals. Um, so I made it through the first round. I made it through two rounds out of three. 
and I was a little happier with myself because I actually went out there and tried and I told myself like the next time I go to another like major championship where like it's professionals there I'm gonna it doesn't matter what you did in the collegiate season the the best collegiates continue to do great things after the after post collegiate season so um so yeah like that was like really mentally like where it was like the road bump where I was like I don't know if I want to do this anymore like my junior year and I just think that it was my first year back from COVID like doing a whole entire season which mm-hmm. is why I think it was just a lot it was long I was turning 21 but yeah so after that I was like it was just it was just a lot going on so like I said I had to reflect looked in the mirror I'm like well it wasn't really it was it wasn't really me I just think it was the people who I was surrounding myself with like I was like one of the best in my friend group like in terms of track so everyone was already done. I wanted to be outside. I wanted to party. I wanted to have a good time. Like I said, I was turning 21. So it was just like I wanted to do everything else but focus on the goal at hand. And it was just a lesson I needed to be learned um, because the grass isn't always green on the other side, which is what I've learned. It's like, yeah, we get tired sometimes. Yeah, we don't want to compete all the times. Like it's mentally draining. But at the end of the day, when I take a break from track, I'm, I'm ready to be back at practice. And of course, when you're living in it, it's like, ah, I could be doing something else. But of course, like when something is taken away from you, you wish that you can do it. You wish that you can be there. So like I said, I did a lot of reflecting and I looked in the mirror and I'm just like, like, if I have the opportunity and ability to wake up every day and do what I love and be like, continue to stay healthy and inspire people, why not be the best me until like literally I can't anymore? And it's honestly something that's just in me like up until this point that just doesn't allow me to be like average. Like when I'm at practice, like I can complain about a workout, but when my coach say three, two, one, it's just like, I have to give it my all. It's just something in me that just hasn't told me to stop yet. So I pray it doesn't, it doesn't burn out no time soon, but that's just where I'm at. I just wrapped you up for a good minute. (laughs)